Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. I woke up in the morning and I said to myself, I need some relaxation. And I opened YouTube and I found one guy is a Hindu and the other guy is a Muslim. So I said to myself, which one I should listen to? I mean, to enjoy my coffee. So I said, let me see this guy. They asked him a question about Christ. So I became interested. And he's a Hindu. If you are a Hindu, hello, my friend. Uh, this person, his name is Sad Guru. Now, regardless if I agree with him or not, this is not the topic now. Let us listen what he say about Christ. Now, this one thing, if you take charge, no matter what world throws at you, you will turn it into your well-being. Then, where you go, what kind of situations in li you live, whether you go to heaven or hell, doesn't matter because whatever is thrown at you, you know you will turn it into well-being. This quality is what we are worshipping. This quality is what is worth worshipping because this is true with every one of us. If world throws nastiness, you will become nasty. World throws bitterness, you will become bitter. World throws anger, you will become angry. This is the way most human beings live, because he lived above that. We said, he is godlike. But what happened in their life, the physical events of their life, if you look at it, it's one big tragedy. At the age of thirty-two, you got nailed had a terrible death. You call that a successful life? No. But we bow down to him because it seems, we don't know, but we believe, or people have believed always, that even when he was nailed, he said, they know not what they're doing, forgive them. For that we bow down to him, not because he got nailed. Because getting nailed is not a successful life, isn't it? But even if you nail him, he did not lose his quality. I mean to that. The Muslims always they try to make fun of Jesus for he have nails. How many times we heard Muslim and we saw them saying, Jesus was on the cross, he was humiliated, he was naked as they say, just to put him down. And the funny is that the Muslims is the one who claim that they believe in Jesus. So what Islam does, make you number one hypocrite. In one hand, they believe in Jesus, in the other hand, they want to make fun of Jesus. Even Muhammad, he said that Allah promised him to give him, to give him Mary, the mother of Jesus, as a sexual gift, as a wife in the bed. So Muhammad and Islam after that, they concentrated as much as they can to put Jesus down. This guy is a Hindu. And by the way, there's many things he say, I don't agree with it. I'm not just, you know, I don't think I am agreeing with what he say. But look what he said. Well, being in the cross is not something successful, according to, you know, logic. I mean, come on, he put you in the cross. But I say, for me as a Christian, I think Sadhguru don't understand Christianity still because Jesus, he said, what will happen to him and nobody can take myself, but I lay down myself. Nobody can take me down. I lay down myself. So maybe he is not enough educated about Christianity. However, from his point of view, he will not bow down to Jesus because he was in the cross. He will bow down to Jesus because he forgave them in the cross. And he said that Jesus, even though when he is in the cross, he did not lose his equality, which is absolutely true. That is the quality of God. So God in the flesh will not lose his equality, for he is being in the flesh. That is my Lord Jesus. Now we will take you to a Muslim 
And Muslim, they have meditation class. You know, like Muslim, they sit together, they enjoy their time, like everybody, you know. They have time for God. And, you know, when, when you are a Muslim and you have time for God, it's fun. You relax. Philosophy, spirituality, wisdom. So let us forget about this guru and go to Muslims. This person telling us about who goes to heaven. Please relax. Please relax. Hadith, speaking to Sahaba, speaking to the greatest Ummah that ever walked the earth, speaking to your fathers, speaking to an Ummah that happily gave their lives for the pleasure of Allah. People who did the utmost, the biggest sacrifices and they deemed themselves and the most as the most insignificant people today you do nothing and you think you're up there they did everything and they thought that they were down there the prophet of allah speaking to them he says none of you who's stop i hear i hope guys you are relaxed now i mean we, we we are just giving you inside the atmosphere of islamic classroom it's a meditation class and now he will start talking about prophet muhammad and the second you talk about prophet muhammad everybody relax Everybody, in the name of Muhammad, bring relaxation to your blood. Yeah, it's proven. Speaking to them, he says, none of you, who's he speaking to? He says, none of you will enter Jannah through your actions. None. People walking around like he's already from the people of Jannah, mashallah. People now, they worship their mashaykh. 100% brother, this guy's from Firdaus al-A'la. The Prophet of Allah saying to Sahaba, none of you will enter Jannah through your actions, none. So they asked the Prophet of Allah, even you? He says, yeah, even me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I feel so relaxed. And look at the music in the background. The funny those are Muslim Sunni and they are Wahhabi and the same music is Haram. And the music keeps saying Wah. it's like somebody's dying, you know. Wah. What is that? This is relaxation music. A saxophone. Islamic saxophone. So now he will tell us, we just heard him that Muhammad he said None of you will enter heaven because of his deeds. What about Muhammad, brother? Tell us. The greatest mujahid was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest teacher was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest father was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest husband was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest mercy to humanity was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest habit to ever worship Allah azza wa jal was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest messenger to ever walk the earth was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest prophet to ever receive revelation was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest creation that Allah... Brother, I'm afraid that you are going to lose your testicles very fast. Take it easy. We got it. He is the greatest in everything. He have the greatest boogers. He have the greatest poopoo. Isn't it your Muslim Sunni says that the poopoo of the Prophet smell like musk? I mean, we got it. So he is the greatest in everything. Okay, and but take it easy, man. What's happened to you? I mean, you will lose the baby soon. You are in the seventh month already. What? What's wrong with you? So the greatest prophet is Muhammad. That's it. I mean, we don't worship Muhammad, but he's the greatest. And you know, I don't know, you agree with me or not. You have to meditate when you see this.
if I do not know what the topic, I will think you are eating lobster. Or maybe you are biking a whale or something. What's wrong with you, Abdul? So the prophet is the greatest in what? And the greatest rapist, the greatest, greatest criminal, the greatest child molester, the greatest liar, the great, even his own son wife, he did not leave her alone. Oh, I forgot to say that according to Muslim Sunni, Muhammad, he was the greatest in boom, boom. I don't know why he did not mention that. I'm so upset from you. So now we are talking about who is going to go to, he to heaven, Jannah, they Jannah, when they say Jannah, uh, is heaven supposedly okay but even the muslim do not know even what jannah means jannah is a wrong word for heaven but anyway let it go so brother take it easy and i hope you're still alive you know after uh, this conversation so what happened exactly 100 percent, brother yes. it's the Prophet of Allah sent the Sahaba, none of you will enter Jannah through your actions. None. So they asked the Prophet of Allah, even you? He says, yeah, even me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stop. Here I am upset from you. None of you will enter Jannah because of his deeds. The gang of Muhammad said to him, Hey, Muhammad, the gang leader, even you? He said, even me, man. <laughs> and now he is telling you, when Muhammad, he said, even me, what does that mean exactly? Even Muhammad will not enter heaven because of his deeds. I don't know what deed we are talking about. Is rape is a deed? Stealing is a deed? Child molestation is a deed. Eh, let it go. Islamic deed. So even Muhammad with his great deed will not enter heaven. And now he will describe to you. Do you know who is Muhammad? Who he just said even him will not enter to Jannah? Tell us. This is the moment before uh, the storm. Like, you know, like he's, he, he's getting energy. Like, you know, he's charging his solar system before he starts screaming again. Go, Abdul. The greatest Mujahid was Muhammad sallallahu And look at this music. It's a bomb. Even, even, even with their prophet, they had to put a bomb. I mean, look, look. The greatest Mujahid was boom. The greatest... They have to put a boom. Because this is Muhammad. Are you kidding me? Thank God that nukes is not exist in that time of Muhammad. They will nuke us all. We are talking about Muhammad. Islam is peace, brother. Yeah. The greatest what? Boo. With every greatest boo. Actually, you prove your point. He's the greatest. The greatest Mujahid was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest teacher was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest father was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest husband was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest mercy to humanity was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest habit to ever worship Allah azza wa jal was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest messenger to ever walk the earth was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest prophet to ever receive revelation was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest creation that Allah ever created was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the last one, almost you are doing poo, poo honestly. I mean, if you stand up, I assure you there is something coming from your bum. What, what is the last one? What? I mean, the last one was really hilarious. What? What is this? Creation that Allah ever created was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, even me. Except that only if Allah azza wa jal was to show mercy upon me. Look at the art. Look at the art. Like, even me. And then like, now slow music. And now he's quiet. Like, do it again, brother. You know what? I think you, be, you should be an actor. 
there's a stage uh, you know where uh, you know like in a, it's called the uh, terrorist idols are you terrifying them or you are teaching them what is this uh, you are teaching them now I wonder what happened to those people who they are watching you are you going to take a knife and start what what happened man what's wrong with you Creation that Allah ever created was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says even me Did you see like the sound effect like you know like the, the hit and the even me and they put like uh, somebody hit the spoon with the dish But you know my friend you know what you did now You did tons of poo poo and you did expose your crazy false prophet. You just said that none of you will enter heaven because of his deeds. And you just said, they ask him, not even you, he said, not even me. So all the verses of the Quran is a fraud. Isn't it the Quran says, who do, who do good deeds, they will have heaven. Isn't it the Quran says they will have rivers? Isn't it the Quran says we'll have a bracelet? You will wear a bracelet, brother. You imagine you wearing a bracelet, that would be funny. <laughs> you will look sexy, brother, <laughs> with the bracelet. <laughs> bracelet of gold. Yeah, so uh, uh, so you just said that deeds have nothing to do with going to heaven. And everybody heard you. That's mean everything Muhammad he said in his fraud Quran is a lie. And give glad tiding to those who believe and do righteous good deed. For them will be the garden under which river flow. So Muhammad is a fraud because this is 100% contradict the Quran and listen here Muslim don't tell me this is weak I mean you see how the guy is almost he is doing poo poo explain it to you come on don't make him do it again if you go to the what Muhammad said look how the Muslim they try to cover the poo poo the poo poo of the Prophet they say to you in the translation, they add the word in some translation to cover it alone. None whose deed alone would enter and entitle him to go to paradise, to get to paradise. But in Arabic, it doesn't say that. And the guy who was reading it correctly, actually, in the video. The one who was doing poopoo in the video, he was saying the truth. None of you will enter heaven by his deeds. None of you. They said to him, even you? He said, even me. So here the translation is a fraud as usual. And you know, you need to understand that when Muslims, they add a word, they don't add it by mistake. For them, this is very serious. They added to cover something because this is will expose everything about Muhammad. So here you see the word alone. But the guy in the video, he was not saying the word alone. He never mentioned alone. And if you change the translator, the same website, the same, you know, I mean, amazing. You will see that the word alone disappear. In different translator. None will enter. Read carefully. This is the same story. It's not a different one. No one enter paradise by the but by the mercy of Allah. Okay. There is no other solution. Okay. Here, read carefully, they add the word alone again, but in Arabic does not say alone. Here, they added the word alone again, but in Arabic doesn't say alone.
they lie when they translation when they translate and this is very normal in Islamic culture to lie in order to defend the Prophet it's called taqiyya they knew that those is going to be read by those who they believe not in Muhammad But the most important one, that at the end of the day, we will go to paradise and we will get 72 versions at least, and we will have a penis will never go limp. And actually this is the only good news, you know. You know, for me as a, a person who is interested in the religion of Allah, I want to be sure that the penis I'm going to get will never go limp. I mean, actually, I think in the heaven of Allah, every one of us will have a resume. And in the resume, it's going to be written, qualification of this person is going to say between two bracket. First it says, and he will have male member that never become flaccid. Between two bracket, Allah will say, i.e. soft or limp. And that is the quality of Islam. So the Hindu guru, when they ask him about Jesus, he said Jesus when he was on the cross, he did not lose his equality, even though he was in the cross. Not what they're doing, forgive them. For that we bow down to him, not because he got nailed. Because getting nailed is not a successful life, isn't it? But even if you nail him, he did not lose his quality. For that we bow down. So that's all that matters to us, whether they existed or not. So Jesus in the cross, he did not lose his equality. Muhammad is not in the cross. He did not lose his equality too. And it is here. Allah will give you a straightforward penis. You can even use it to drill for oil. In different hadith, Muhammad, he says, is going to be endless. And look how beautiful it is. I mean, don't they say size does matter? Well, in Islam, size is everything. To the point your penis will be endless. So you will be in the earth, but your penis is passing Mars and send your pictures from there. By the way, if, I don't know if you can put like attach your phone to your penis and send it to different galaxy. You know, I mean, that, that's an idea. Hmm? So what we learned today from uh, the meditation class of the Muslim brother here, very nice person, that Islam is a joke and you do you see because converting to Islam is a good deed believing in the Prophet is a good deed doing jihad for Allah is a good deed kidnapping women you know, children selling them in the market is a good deed but then Muhammad he did poopoo he says none of this will take you to heaven no sacrifices and they deem themselves and the most as the most insignificant people today you do nothing and you think you're up there they did everything and they thought that they were down there the prophet of Allah speaking to them he says none of you who's he speaking to he says none of you will enter Jannah through your actions none did you hear it Muslims when you do a Hajj you are being a fool they take your money, the Saudi. They spend it to, you know, to go to Thailand. Hello, Mecca became the, the biggest Las Vegas in the Middle East. High hotels and the poor you come from Pakistan. You spend all the saving of your life. Just what? When you want to cut, touch the black stone. So Muhammad is a fraud because doing Hajj is a good deed, but your deed will not enter your heaven. So what are you doing? Muslims, are you listening? 
Salat is a good deed. You pray Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. You wake up in the morning, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Bow down, okay, up and down, up down. Huh? Okay. You spend your life doing this, and Muhammad saying you idiot. That will not get you to heaven. This is why in the translation they add the word alone to save the problem because this is this alone is not there and that destroys Islam. You see, if he says alone, eh, we can say, okay, this is one thing you need to get to heaven and then there is other things. No. And even me, Muhammad said, even I. And this is why this Abdul is so excited. Peace be upon him. This Abdul. I like him actually. People walking around like he's already from the people of Jannah, mashallah. <laughs> people now they worship their Mashaykh. 100% brother. This, people, this guy's from Firdaus al -Ala. Don't you worship Muhammad too? Somebody make a cartoon, you kill him? A guy just yesterday, he killed a. Uh, uh, a police woman, poor woman, she have a bunch of kids to take care of, shouting Allahu Akbar from Tunisia. They give you refuge, they bring you to, to England, they bring you to France, they give you papers, they give you salary, they give you food, they give you school. And even they pay for your Islamic center, and then you go in the street and you kill them. You worship Muhammad. You do. When he's worshipping Muhammad and killing people for Muhammad will make you go to heaven? You just said you you just heard your prophet saying all the good deed will not get you to heaven. So you are literally a fool. Going against what you are saying. In one hand saying that your good deed will not get you to heaven, and then after five minutes he says, Brother, let's go pray. And the one who don't pray is a kafir. But you just told them that praying will not help you. And not to forget to mention that the Muslim believe in destiny. So you pray or not, this is a destiny. It's written for you where you will go already. You do pray, you don't pray. You do poo, -poo you don't do poo, poo Who care? Allah, he wrote for you. Before he made you, where you will go? And we can show the reference. Even a baby child in Islam who is born. You see, Muhammad, uh, uh, let me see if I can find the... Uh, the video of uh, Zakir Naik. They are Zakir Naik. What was the religion? Of a prophet Muhammad. <coughs> okay. What was his religion? Now Zakir Naik for sure you have an answer. You know Zakir Naik, no mercy. Then was asked by a Christian on Facebook. What was the religion of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu before he was appointed as a prophet? Before I reply to this question, I would like to remind that most of the non-Muslims and even some of the Muslims have a misconception that Islam is a new religion Absolutely that no. came into existence after Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. No, we don't believe that. We, we play yesterday, the one who did not watch the video yesterday, this is why our videos are extremely educational, give you an extreme answers of everything you want to know about this garbage cult. In the video yesterday, if you remember, the guy, he says that the pagan, the pagan in Quraysh, the people, the people of Mecca, they used to worship Allah too, and they believe in Tawheed. They believe everything the Muslim they believe. They kiss the black stone. They believe in everything. They believe in the Kaaba. They believe in uh, uh, in Allah, and they believe Allah is the supreme God. So what they do? They uh, take idols beside Allah. So they are exactly like the Muslims. But and he said that they take idol to be the middle between them and Allah helpers to them. And the Muslim, they do the same, they kiss the black stone. And Muhammad, he said to them that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. And Muhammad, he said to them, the one who touched the black stone, his sin is erased. 
So Muhammad is nothing but a continue of an older religion worshiping the moon god Allah. Continue, Zakir Naik. Thank you very much. Upon him, and they believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the founder of the religion of Islam. Let me tell you, Islam is there since time immemorial, mm -hmm. since man set foot on this earth. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the founder of the religion of Islam, but he's the last and final messenger. He's the last. Allah yeah. Our Allah, he stops sending mail no more. That's it. Coming, guys. I know. He's the last prophet, brother. He's the last prophet. Yeah. He's the last messenger. Tell us more. First prophet is Adam, peace be upon him, and then the 25 messengers mentioned my name in the glorious Quran and our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent 124,000 messengers on the Stop! 124,000 messenger Muhammad said How many? Zach and Naik, I want to zoom if you don't mind. I want to zoom in your face in this moment when you said 124,000. If you may allow me, please. What is that? Are you trying to count their names, Zach and Naik, because you have a good memory? Okay, let me zoom more. Maybe I can find the names. Hey Zuzu, 124,000 messenger. So Allah, he sent 124,000 Quran. And all of them, they are gone. Except one Quran, brother. Just one. Yeah, I remember. I remember that Quran which Allah he saved from being demolished, the one the goat ate it. I mean it saved. Aisha she said the chapter of Al Dakao, it used to be equal to the chapter of Al Ahzab, which means more than two hundred verses are missing. You know. Unbelievable. And what Zakir will say next is astonishing. That in connection with the previous video will go there. Don't think we are taken out of the topic. No, everything is connected here. You know, for me, I don't really, I mean, I really, I like wake up, I see what, uh, you know, what, what I would do today. And I don't prepare for it. And I did not prepare even to play for Zakir Naik now. But just to connect the dots together so you can see with me the image. Tell us more, Zakir Naik. On the face of the earth. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the founder of Islam, but he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. So regarding the question, what was the religion of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, before he got prophethood? And we know Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, got prophethood at the age of 40. So what was the religion before that? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was born in Deen al-Fitr. He was born in the innate religion. And that is what a prophet said, that every human being, whether he's born in a Muslim family or a non-Muslim family, he is born in Deen al-Fitr. That means he is on the straight path, he's born as a Muslim. <coughs> I just discovered I am an ex-Muslim. Oh boy. We just heard this Abdul saying that everyone is born as a Muslim and he is telling the truth according to Islam. Yes, they are born as a Muslim. But look what happened here. You know, one of the unique things about Muhammad that he is the prophet of Pupu. And as long as he have a mouth, he keep making Pupus. Um, we will search for a hadith. Which one? Which one? Which one? I'm typing in English again. I hate it. I hate it. Uh, okay. All right. Aisha, she said, 
after attending a funeral of a baby child who is born of a Muslim family. And here it says, born in a state of fitrah. This is what Zakir Naik was trying to say in Arabic, but because you don't speak Arabic, which is funny. And then he said, fatrah, 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 like that, like the that, you know, fatrah, <laughs> fatrah. You know, come on. I mean, you claim to be a sheikh and you don't know, you know, I can teach you Arabic in two weeks, man. So the born in the state of fatrah, okay, what does that mean? Aisha, the mother of the believer, and Muhammad, by the way, he made Aisha to be called the mother of the believer so nobody would sleep with her after him. Look at this evil person. He forbid them from sleeping with their mother. <laughs> Aisha, she was 17 and going in 18 when, when he died, and she is the mother of Abu Bakr. <laughs> hey, Abu Bakr, you are almost 60. Aisha, she is 17. She is your mother now? Yes, brother, so I cannot sleep with her because he knew what kind of people he have around him. There is a happiness for this child, Aisha, she said, a child who was born as a Muslim, as Muhammad said, and he's born in a Muslim family anyway. So Aisha, she thought after attending the funeral that this person would go to heaven because he is a, he's a child. The prophet, he says to her, <laughs> Aisha, stupid Aisha, idiot Aisha. <laughs> Crazy Aisha, what are you talking about? Don't you know that Allah created the paradise? And he created the hell, and he created the dwellers of this paradise, and the dozens of the of this hell? So Aisha, she's assuming that this child, he will go to heaven. Why he will go to heaven? Because simply he did not commit sin. He's a baby, and he's born a Muslim, and he's a born of a Muslim family in the top of that. And here we go, the Prophet himself is praying on him on the funeral. And this child, he done no evil fear, he did not reach even the age of evil doing. And as you see, this is Sahih. This child, he did not commit any evil. He is an infant. Allah Messenger, there is a happiness for the child who is a bird from the birds of paradise, for committed no sin, nor has reached the age when one can commit sin. He said, Aisha, pre-adventure. Pre, 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 pre it may be the otherwise which means he might go to hell. Or why Muhammad? The guy, he did not commit sin. He is a child, he's a baby. Because Allah created for paradise those who are fit for it. So Muhammad saying this baby, he might not fit because it's Allah who decide before he created him where he will go. It is not the deed you do. It is not the sin you commit will decide where you go. It is destiny. So, because Allah created for paradise those who are fit for it while they were yet in their father backbone, not loins. And created for hell those who are going to hell. He created them for hell while they were in their father backbone. Do you see it? So all the garbage we hear about brother, you have to pray brother. Brother, you have to do charity to build a mosque in New York, brother. Brother, the prophet who says who give a loan for Allah, brother, will make him have a corner lot in the paradise, brother, as you see in the commercial. This is why The video we showed you where the Muslim Abdul is going crazy about Muhammad saying none of you his deed will save him is extremely important for you Christians. Because that means everything if you are a Muslim is a lie. Even a child, baby child, he have no guarantee to go to heaven. It's a gambling casino.
And actually, even in gambling, you have a choice here. You are not you are not even the one who is playing. Allah, he played you before he created you. And this is a great example. This is a baby, infant, child. And yet, he is not sure where he will go because it's written for him before he created him. It is not sin or doing bad or good will make you go to heaven in Islam. Yeah, I will make a special video or uh, a robbery about that. I was planning today actually, but maybe later. I will make a video about the decision of Biden to recognize the genocide of the Armenian, but I find it very hypocrite of him to do so. Because still, he have an army base in Turkey, still he is giving a lot of money to Turkey, and still he is supporting Turkey, and this is always a joke. But let us go back to our topic. So everyone is born as a Muslim, showing us that you have no choice to be or not to be. And everyone is decided for him where he will go, showing us that it's you converting to Islam or not converting to Islam is a joke. And your deed will never make you go to heaven. And we heard the video and we show you the hadith. In the top of that, Muhammad, he made it more clear. Look what he said. Uh, <clears throat> that when Allah he created you as a human and this is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim which means it's very authentic when Allah he created you he wrote your destiny and that destiny is going to take over what you do in Arabic here it says that you are going to be a person who is almost entering heaven. Almost you are entering heaven. And then what Allah he wrote for you, take over and then you enter hell. Muhammad is swear saying, and when Muhammad is swear, it's mean he is saying a big lie. So a man among you, and by the way, yesterday somebody made a comment. He says, uh, uh, Christian Prince, he says Allah means. He did not say Allah does mean. Why he don't say does? My friend, I don't like does. Don't you put it there. I mean, I made a video for you two hours, and all what you got from my video, I did not say does. Does you, idiot. I mean, sometimes you find people are there, you're coming from the moon. Christian Prince did not say does. My friend, this is not a grammar class. English is not my first language. Hello? He did not say does. Like what? So from the two other videos I made for you, you, didn't, you did not notice anything except does. Don't get married, man. Don't. So a man amongst you may do good, de good deeds till... Look, look, he's doing what? Good deeds. Till there is only a cupid between him and paradise. And then, then, let me put does here. Then does. I mean, this does sound like a German man. I don't like it, honestly. I hate it. This what does. Like, what the heck is that? Why would we make it, what, what, don't make it was. Does. It like beer, anyway. So, and then, what has been written for him decide his behavior. 
And he start, I'm trying to do the same as that guy, and I will get red in my face, and uh, you know, like I wanna get so excited and hit the table, and the graphite is the greatest, like my idiot, you said, it says here that your deed doesn't count, greatest in what? So, and then he behavior start doing evil deed. And now I end with does. So we can make the audience more happy. Evil deed he does, brother. <laughs> I'm going to put does every two words. You like it or not? I don't know. I, this is a new English. Just to make because there is one audience he is not happy with me. I'm not adding does. So from now on, brother, I'm going to promise you. I'm going to add as much does as I can. Actually, I'm going to make a book. Say it's because it does Muhammad does his wife when he beat her. Okay. So. You are doing good deed all your life. And then what is written by Allah will take over. And then you start doing the opposite and then you go to hell. So what's the point of this religion? Any Muslim can tell me what is the point of this madness. Okay, sorry. Let me, re let me rephrase the question because some, they might not... And Anyone can tell me what does this, uh, uh, you know, religion mean? Let me let me put like a sticker in my computer screen to add what does anybody here and there, you know. <clears throat> let me change the title. Okay, hold on. I'm going to attach the title, and I will change it. Why Islam does make me? <laughs> Abdul, what is this? What is this? And look, this hadith is total contradiction for the hadith the guy in the video was saying. I want you to think with me. Oh, sorry. I want you to does think with me. <laughs> when this guy was saying, this but none of you will enter Jannah through your actions none oh what happened hold on uh. All right, now, none of you will enter paradise, none, because of what? Because of his deeds. So they asked a prophet of Allah, even you? He says, yeah, even me. Even me. But guess what that will do? Because after he says, even me, he says, Allah, unless Allah cover me with his mercy. But this is a total contradiction for this hadith where he says that it's written for you already. Are you thinking with me? It's written for you already. Allah, he made decision. What mercy? So it sounds like when Muhammad speak about the mercy, he's talking about Allah, he was merciful for you before he created you and he decided to send you to, he to heaven or to hell. So if his mercy cover you, that means you are a lucky person. Allah, he decided to send you to heaven. If the admin can post the link where Muhammad, he said, and he is racist, as you know, he said that Allah, he created when he created Adam, he created the white people from his right shoulder and he created the black people from his left shoulder. And then he said to those who they are coming from the right shoulder, which means the white, you go to heaven and I don't care. And he said to those who do, they are born of the left shoulder of Adam, you go to hell and I don't care. 
That is destiny. Allah, because he is a racist, he decide that all those who they are born with color, they go to hell. And the word in Arabic, it says, لا أبالي لا أبالي I don't care. And this is Sahih. Reported that Allah said, Allah Messenger saying, God created Adam when he created him and struck his right shoulder and brought forth of a spring like small ants and he struck his left shoulder and brought forth his offspring black as though they were charcoal. And then he said to the party from the right side, which means the white people. Who is the party coming from the white side? The white people. To paradise, and I do not care. And he said to the party in his left shoulder, to hell, and I do not care. And the funny, in English here, they did not say the word Sahih, but in Arabic it says Sahih. See, they're trying to hide it from you. Hukm Sahih, Isnadun Hasan, authentic. This is Islam. So, Muhammad, in the top of that, he made it more evil and more ugly, saying that every single one who is white. Not necessarily he will go to heaven, no, in the other hadith. But here, every single white is going to heaven. And every single a person who is with color, his skin have a color. Oh, by the way, all of us, we have colors anyway, because white is a color anyway. Which means if you are a person who is Asian, Indian, African, according to Muhammad, you are not going to go to heaven. And I challenge any Muslim to say to me, this is a lie. Who is a Muslim is willing to say to me, you are lying. And I hope you people you are saving reference, which the admins are posting for you. So later you can use them in the case of needing them. This is a religion. And this is God. So everything they say to you, like when they come to the, a black person, they say to him, brother, do you know that the prophet, he was, he made a sermon, the last sermon, the last sermon, by the way, hadith is a fraud about black and white, you know, well, here we go. I mean, what Allah, he sent me to the black and the white. He sent you to do what exactly? You just say that all of them, they will go to hell. just because of their color. So if we try to make a conclusion, Islam is a joke. Islam is anti-humane. Islam is racist. Islam is a supreme white Arab supremacist cult. This is why if you go in the Middle East, you will see that you will never see people are racist like the Arab. And I am an Arab from the Middle East. This is why when the Muslim they speak to Hindus, they speak to them down, like you know, he's a he's a Hindu, you know, we are Muslims. 
because this religion feed feed supremacist and you will see a guy who is from India just because he's a Muslim he think he is better than another his follow from India his own citizen his own people just because he's a Muslim why because Muhammad told them that you are the best for mankind and the best of you is the one who go and bring the Hindus the Christians the Jews the atheists and put a chain around their necks as dogs do you see it we are not making things up this is your website this is your prophet this is your statement, this is his statement, this is your print, this is your teaching, this is your translation. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just reading what it says. Uh, Ahmad, Ahmad, he said, the prophet, he says, there is no superiority for a white person on a black person except his religion. Show me the hadith, which is authentic. Here you will see the hypocrisy of the Muhammadan. Here we go. I will put for you what you just said here on the screen and I'm going to wait for you to show me the authentic hadith for this aren't you Muslim you say that you play always the game of daif and weak and strong okay let's play it together hmm. this is what you say to me it's totally against what your prophet says about black people or white people now I want you to give me the reference please the authentic reference and then everybody will see in a second that what you said is a joke Give it to me. I'm waiting. Is it your prophet who made fun of Bilal? Saying to him, saying to the white Arab, I made him a leader because black people, they are good in fight, not because he respect them. Obey your leader even if he had a head of what? What he described black people? Do you see it? Raising head, obey the raising head. Are you there? Is willing your prophet to go to New York and say to the black people there you have a raising head? Is that how prophet of God he talk? Making fun of their look? And Muhammad he made fun of the Asian too. He said that the Asian they are people who they have a face as if it is hit by hammer. Actually, even Muhammad made it clear that the people of Gog and Magog, which are crazy creatures according to him, they are coming from Asia. Any Muslim? And not only that, Muhammad, he made it clear that the most person Allah he hate is a black person. How much racist you can be more than this? Let me find you this hadith about black person. <clears throat> Why the most person Allah he hate is a black person? You tell me. I'm listening.
אוקיי. שייטון, according to Muhammad is black. The one who will destroy the Kaaba is a black. The most person Allah he hate is black. And he made it clear that when Allah he created Adam, he created from his right shoulder, the white people and he says you go to heaven I don't care do we have any Muslim want to say anything anyone the most hateful among the creation of Allah is one black man So now a Muslim, he look around, or maybe this is the one Allah, he hate him most. He's a black man. Can you believe how disgusting, racist, this cult? And then they go between the black people and they fool them and they say to them, Islam is against racism. And they say to them, do you know what the white man did to you? In fact, all the slaves of Africa was captured and sold by the Muslims in North Africa. Specifically, Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, and Libya. It was not the European going to Africa capturing human beings. It was the Arab Muslims. If you don't believe me, go and read history. And now Mauritania is the biggest slavery country. More than 80% of the population are slaves. Muhammad Saeed saying, one black, not all. Well, this is a good try, Muhammad Saeed. One black, not all. Okay, why he is one black, not all, first of all? Why, why it happened to be black? Why always the one who is bad in Islam is the black one? Secondly, what we will do with the hadith where your prophet said that Allah created the white from the right shoulder of Adam and he said to them, go to heaven. And he created the black from the left shoulder and he said, go to hell. Is it only one black? And as you see, this is very sahih. Here we go. And by the way, just to show you the hypocrisy, you can use this website, you can, you can take the link of this website, and you can go to Google, translate the page, which means translate, because you have already translation of the Muslim, right? Translate still to English. So you can see here, it says sahih. Why the Muslim in the translation did not mention the word Sahih? They took it off. Look, it says, Great is Isnad Hassan. They skip where it says it's authentic. Fields. Uh, we don't want people to call anyone he call other people pigs we will give you a warning second time we will block you you are a muslim you are a christian i don't care don't go down and admin please watch the text anyone will use such a language i consider you trying to stop us from our mission i will consider you an enemy to what we do you're trying to take us down you're trying to make it we are the one who say those things so watch your tongue otherwise I will send you free shipping and hand it into Allah do we have any Muslim 
So look what we learned in this short video, which is nothing but a few hours. Really short video of Christian Prince. That Muhammad himself is not going to go to heaven unless Allah, he warp him with his mercy. And Muslims have no guarantee of going to heaven. In fact, already it's written for them where they will go. And Muhammad, he made it clear that most likely you are going to go to hell because it is a destiny. Where you are going to go? Let me add does here. So the guy there in the you does go to heaven to hell, okay? Here we go. We are met adding does. Do we have any Muslim here have something to say? Uh, Ahmed Hafiz. Uh, guys, uh, Ahmed Hafiz, you got a point? Ahmed Hafiz, you got a point, my friend. You talk a lot. Well, what? This is unfair dis uh, the discussion. I mean, why you don't say that to your prophet? Anyone who oppose him, he kill him. I mean, look who is talking. Can I say what I am saying now, Mr. Unfair in the Middle East? Or I will be killed and slaughtered in two seconds. So look who's talking about unfair. Brother, the Chinese are being unfair to Muslims. Just yesterday, Biden, the coward, and he's still better than Trump, the coward, he announced that he admit that the Ottoman, they slaughter more than a million and a half for one reason, they are Christians. And as long as you are talking about unfair discussion, are you willing to call me, Mr. Ahmed Hafiz? And then everybody will see that you are a big mouth, but you have no courage to prove you wrong. Let me open my pal talk and let us see if Mr. Ahmed Hafiz is willing to call. Because he complained, this is unfair. He keeps saying, who want to call me? I mean, there's nobody open opportunity for people to call him and challenge him as I do. Anyone, I don't care. You are with beard. You are with, your beard is small or long. Who care? I mean, I'm not going to judge you by your beard. Now, look, Zach and Nike. You have no beard at all. He tried to grow it, but it's not working. So, Ahmed, are you willing, my friend? I open my Skype. You can hear the peep. I am on. Sorry, in my pal talk. Are you willing to call me? A person, he is calling himself David Wood, but he is insulting me, he's a Muslim. Let us see this guy, Let's, let us laugh with this guy. Eh, eh, it's not working too. Eh, let me block you then, a joker. I mean, they don't even dare to use their names. He uses uh, David Wood. Ahmed, I'm waiting for you. So if someone else unfair, you do not want truthful discussion. Ahmed, I warn you, this is the last time I say to you, call me, otherwise I will block you because you keep whining like a woman giving birth in the delivery room, but you will not give us your baby. So this is the last warning. Either you say, I'm going to call you. Here we go. We are giving you the chance to call me and to say what you want to say. Otherwise, leave in peace. You are a potato. You have no answer. You can answer in the chat, or you can call me and answer here. Live, people, they can hear you. Still, you are not doing both. Why? Because you are a potato. Don't waste my time. Be a man. I just want to know the truth. I will just tell you the truth. And stop complaining and get out then. I just want to know the truth and the entire truth. That's not fair. You are not taking a talk. And there is that, that, that. All this time you are calling me names until now, and I did not block you. Allowing you to give me any answer and then inviting you to call me. And yes, you don't want to do both. You know what, brother? Let us blame the Jews. Why we don't have. Why Muhammad could not have babies? Jews, brother, the Jews. They made his penis go limp. 
By the way, this is true. According to Muhammad, the penis of the Prophet was unfunctional because of a Jew. His name is Lubayd ibn al-Asam. And this is why I will never go in a fight with a Jew. I mean, just leave my private part alone. Stop. Don't go there. I mean, come on. The Prophet continued for such and such a period, imagining that he had boom, boom. But in fact, he did not. Look, even the boom, boom of Muhammad is fiction. There's nobody there. I mean, he went to the moon. Sorry, he split the moon. There's no witnesses. He went to the heaven. There's no witnesses. I mean, all, the, all what he do, there's no witnesses. Jabril come to him. There's no witnesses. Jabril goes. There's no witnesses. The donkey flying, donkey come. There's no witnesses. And now sex, there's no witness. His wife is not there. So he's having sex with who? And then if you go down in the story, they will say to you, there's a guy. His name is... Lubayd ibn al-Asam, and he was a Jew. This guy, he took some hair from the cupid hair of Muhammad, and he controlled the Prophet. And then Allah, he sent two angels. And they start doing their ritual. Barut Marut. And then the prophet, private parts start moving. After a long time being sleeping. The prophet was imagining having sex, but in fact, he did not. The angels, they came. Allah, he sent the ambulance. Wee, 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 There come to me two men. One of them sat near my feet. And the other near my head. Oh, boy. One in your head and one in your feet. And one near my feet asked the one near my head, pointing to me. What's wrong with this man? Look at this. Look at this drama. Hey, Hindu, learn. Learn how to make a drama. You can make a movie about it. Like, put some songs, like, hey, 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 you know, like, the prophet is sleeping now, and like, you know, she chose like a guy who is handsome, you know? And then, uh, uh, I like Indian movies, by the way. I like, I like Indian people. They're nice people. In Indian movies, I mean, it's amazing. Like, they see the guy talking to the girl, suddenly like 10,000 appear behind him. Where and how? No, don't ask questions. This is Muhammad here. Don't ask questions. So there's two guys, one in his head and one in his feet. And the first one, and both are angels, by the way. Those are angels. What's wrong with this guy, huh? What's wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is the same guy he changed his name he came with different <laughs> Abdul I'm trying to call you but obviously you are uh, uh, you know using a storing software that's why your bad dog is not working uh, and then brother uh, those two they say the first one ask the other one uh, 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 he's under the effect of magic what the heck? Muhammad is under the effect of magic. Can you believe it, brother? The Jews, brother. The Jews can do that. The Jews. This is why I don't I, I don't like to, you know, like I, I, I debated some Jews and I spanked some rabbi you know, for their lives, but I'm afraid they would do, I mean, imagine, you go to bed and then like, like, what happened? Like, come on, stand up. It's not working. And then you go to doctors and they take medicine and you're like, what happened? 
and then you find that the Jews took some hair from your bum, and then they do magic for you. This is not easy, brother. The Prophet was under threat. Under this is hacking at that time. This is a smart hacking at that time. Like today, there's a hacking. It's that time, the Prophet they hack him from taking hair from his butt, and they control him from far distance, brother. This is here you're telling you that the Jews are the first one who they, who made remote control. They do remote control people, you know, like, you know, take care of some, you know, and, you know. Right? And then the, the hadith says that the angels, they found where the Jews, they hide the magic and then they throw it away and then like that's it and then the prophet he was good to go true story do we have any muslim want to say anything so guys what we learn from this today did we learn something good how many of you okay no i did not say how many of you i should say does does uh, thank you for the guy who corrected my glamour grammar how many does of you does like does what i say and does who does the prophet does he was under does influence and does you does him does together the magic of the does when does by the prophet of the prophet by the jews they does it to him and who can does such a magic to does a prophet Think about it in a does way. I thought the prophet is a protected. <laughs> uh, Cuckoo Jasmine saying, are you going to dress up as Solomon in the next Halloween? I don't know what you mean. First of all, Halloween is a pagan practice and it is Muhammad who do Halloween. All his religion is Halloween. He said I was victorious by terror and he used to wear his wife clothing. So don't be silly, otherwise I will send you free shipping and hand it into Allah. We Christians, anyone who celebrate Halloween, he is not being a Christian. But it is your prophet who wear his wife clothes and not only that, he says, I never receive Quran unless I am in the dress of Aisha the Muslim they come with the conclusion saying oh he did not mean a dress he meant house but that make it even more horrible because that mean all the verses Muhammad received in the house of Khadija was not true <laughs> okay <clears throat> complicity of the Quran there's no complicity in the Quran Quran is just a not the Quran is not even exists you see if you open the Quran okay hold on just to show you when somebody says the complicity of the Quran I know what does that mean excuse my English you know but this is not really uh, exist give me a second Let me try to find something for you. All right. If you remember, there is a video we played before. Of a guy, his name no man Khan. The Muslim they consider him a sheikh. Uh, I'm just trying to find it. Hold on. I find this video is very 
uh, important because this video exposes everything about the cult of Islam. Many important things. And it's coming from the mouth of those who believe in this mad religion, this cult. Prophet was still in Mecca and it went on for another decade. So this surah took a long time to come down. It didn't come down in one shot. Now, having said that, Baqarah, if you study it in the beginning, it's believers and disbelievers, you know, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ Believers and disbelievers. It talks about hypocrites, which is the third subject, right? Uh, you know, مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ the, 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 the hypocrites. Then it talks about the story of Adam alayhi salam. Then there's this huge section on the history of, of the Israelites, Banu Israel. Ya Bani Israel, uthkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum. A long section. And by the way, even inside that section, there is no chronology. Meaning some of the events that happened in Jewish history later are mentioned before. And things that happened before are mentioned later. So it's not even chronological inside. Then it jumps over to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And after Ibrahim alayhi salam, it jumps over to the change of the Kaaba. And after the change, because we used to pray towards Jerusalem, you know Did that, right? Did he say jump? We used jump. to pray towards Jerusalem, and then it switched over to the, the Kaaba. And then it goes straight over to, you know, the, the, this Ummah. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا وَلَا نَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعَ وَنَقْسِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ This Ummah will be tested, Allah tells us. And one of the first big tests was when we changed the direction of our prayer. You know? And then after that, it's all these laws which don't seem connected at all. There's laws about fasting, <laughs> there's laws about going to Hajj, there's laws about. Do you see this? What he's saying? He's saying to you, it's a messed up. There's no connection between verse and verse. He jump. He, he is the one who used the word jump, not me. Jump. So, what complicity of the Quran? First, the Quran is not even made by Muhammad. They claim there is a guy, his name is Muhammad, and I'm not sure really if he exists. But for the sake of argument, let him exist. Then they start collecting things supposedly he said. And then they decided to put this here and that there. And this is why he is saying to you, they don't make sense together. They are not in harmony together. Like you go in the Old Testament, the, the book of Genesis, it says to you how God created everything from the beginning. Here suddenly he is about Adam, suddenly he is about Moses, suddenly he is about the Muslim today, suddenly he is about the Christian, suddenly he is about, I mean, it's all messed up. About divorce, which is totally out of left field. I was going to learn fasting, Hajj. See? Okay, the next thing will be about spirituality also. And then it's divorce, <laughs> fighting, divorce. Spending in faq fi sabilillah, riba, ahkam of riba. It's all, all over the place. And then it concludes with this prayer. Did he, say, did he say all over the place? Muslim, did I say the word all over the place? Or this is your Muslims, you call, you call him scholar. So what Quran complicity? I mean, this is a joke. Or Quran, you know, yellow pages, yellow pages is a billion time Billion. The Quran is zero compared to yellow pages. In yellow pages, it has maybe a million name in a book, but you can find them right away. In the Quran is the most messed up book. I mean, this guy is telling us it's all over the place. Why is Allah is suffering from flight of thoughts? Why is like that? Cannot Allah make an organized book? He cannot, because it's not made by God. End of it all is this prayer that we're going to study today. So when the Western academic looks at this, he says, the Quran is completely disconnected. It's just all these random verses that they, and by the way, I don't agree with chapter and I don't agree with verse, which I'll get. Listen carefully. This is your Abdul. He don't agree with the word chapter. And he don't agree with the word verse. Why? Listen carefully. Not Christian Prince saying that this is him. Till later. <laughs> Ayah is Ayah. It's just an ayah, you can't compare it to anything else. So they look at it and they say the Qur'an is disorganized. Before I tell you about these ayat, what I want to share with you is 
how Suratul Baqara itself is organized in maybe 10 minutes or less. Because I personally, I find it impossible to talk about the Quran, to, to talk about ayat in the Quran without telling you what neighborhood they come from. You have to, you, if you want to understand the house, you have to understand the neighborhood. كما يقول العرب Yeah, the house, yeah, Aisha and Hafsa, they are fighting and yeah, the house. My friend, why you need to understand the Quran by understanding the house if the Quran is written by Allah 40 years before the creation of Adam? Just to give you an example of the madness of this cult. Hey Muslims, who wanna help me? What is the first thing Allah he created? Muhammad Sa'id is in the chat. Muhammad Sa'id, oh. He is saying the opposite of what CP telling him. He is the one who is disconnected. He is the one who said disconnected. He is the one who used the word jump. He is the one who says I don't agree with chapter and he will explain to you why. By the way, he don't agree with the Christian prince. <laughs> He don't agree with me. Are you sure? Muhammad Saeed, we will play and the video will decide if I am saying the opposite or not. People will listen. But I have a question for you, Muhammad Saeed. What is the first thing Allah created? Saeed, what is the first thing Allah created? Any Muslim can help us? What is the first thing Allah created? The pen. Hmm. Muhammad Sa'id, is the Quran created? <laughs> he will say no. Okay, so how you created the pen to write the Quran, but the Quran is not created? So the Quran was exist before the pen or after the pen? <laughs> and here you see the stupidity again. Oh boy. You know, this is why. I like the Chinese, by the way, when they say that he lived as a donkey, never come back as a horse. Brother, Sitar, the Quran is created. If somebody says the Quran created, claim, claim, brother. This is kufr, brother. Okay, brother, did Allah create the pen, the first thing he created, yes, and what he told him, he says, he said to him, write, write what? The Quran. <laughs> but God, brother, the Quran is not created. If the Quran is made by a pen which is a created, continue. Al Jar from Adar, right? So you gotta understand the vicinity, then you understand where you are. Right? Mm. So now my, my first point was when you study it from a critical perspective, it seems like the Quran is unorganized. But let's... Uh, Muhammad Saeed, uh, did he say it seemed like the Quran not organized? D did he say that or this is me saying? It seemed like the Quran is unorganized, not organized. Start over again. <clears throat> the first conversation in Surah Al-Baqarah is about believers contrasted with disbelievers and in the middle of both of them are hypocrites. Believers, disbelievers and hypocrites. The last subject of Surah Al-Baqarah is this dua. This is the last topic of Surah Al-Baqarah. And in this last topic, we make dua to Allah basically to preserve our Iman and to not fall into forgetfulness and keep making mistakes because people who forget Anyway, let's move a little bit because I don't want to play the whole thing, you know. Let us see. Greed. Why do people cheat in business? Greed. Let us see. Let us move a little bit. See, if you're talking to someone, if I talk to you, if you're, for example, a professor, I say, you are sitting here. I don't say the professor is sitting here. Because if I'm talking to you, I use the anyway, second person. You can watch the video. I'm not sure in which minute. You know, I mean, he made it even more clear that the Quran is the most messed up book 
even he says I don't agree with the chapter he mentioned that already but in the other part of the video he mentioned why he don't agree with the word chapter and he said the reason because there is no connection the chapter mean chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 so the story is coming in order in the Quran there is no order watch the video it is there In the top of that, he says that the chapter of Al-Baqarah, the cow, took more than a decade. So what, Muhammad was receiving only Al-Baqarah at that time? No. So who is the one who decided to put this verse here? So what they are saying, that Muhammad was receiving a verse here, verse there, and then we decide to make them a book. <laughs> All right. Uh, stop asking loaded questions. I can ask tricky questions about your religion. Uh, uh, Hashem, uh, you are welcome to call me and call me, ask me a tricky question about my religion. Is that fair, guys? Hashem, can you do me a favor and call me and trick me? So look what you are saying. When we ask Muslims questions, those questions are tricky to Muslims. Why it's tricky? Because simply, Islam is a trick. It's a game. It's a joke. You are disrespecting your own cult, my friend. Call me and ask me a tricky question. Go ahead. I have no fear from your questions. Your questions are welcome. But you are a person who cannot answer our questions, so you step stop asking loaded questions. So why you are here? We are here to ask questions and receive answers. I thought you are a Muslim and you will give me the answer and you will help me. In order to stop Islam from being exposed, you have to ask me to stop asking questions. Ah, you remind me of the Quran chapter 5 verse 101. It says, ask no questions. Ask no questions about things look plain for you. Verse number 102 says, because of former generation, ask the same questions and they left the faith. So you are saying to me, stop asking questions, otherwise you will make us leave the faith. Do we have any Muslim? And by the way, you know, like, you see when Zakir Naik, they said to you that Muhammad, what the religion of Muhammad, he said that the religion of Muhammad, he was a Muslim. He was in, uh, born with a futra. This is what he said, right? Zakir Naik, you remember the video? What was the religion of Prophet Muhammad? He was a Muslim. A beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before he got Prophet, he was a Muslim. See? We go to the other video. We will see that he wasn't a Muslim. He was a pagan. I mean, which one of them is telling the truth? The Messenger believed in what was revealed to him. You know what's remarkable about that? In the beginning of the surah, what are the first words? Alif Lam Mim This is an incredible scene. And when. When Rasulullah goes up to meet with Allah, yeah, Allah with reminds him of that scene. Yeah, he meet to Allah. Yeah, he meet with Allah. 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 What does Alif Lam Mim mean, people? What does that mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? ALM? 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 What does it mean? What does it mean? Allah, Allah, Allah knows. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I mean, this is deep, brother. This is deep. Like, what, Allah, what Alif Lam Mim mean? ALM? What does that mean? Huh? ALM? Huh? And the Muslim get excited, like, what does that mean? What does that mean? And then he says, Allah knows best. <laughs> the 
Tell us more jewelries. You know why that's important? Yeah, why it's important? For many reasons. Why? One of the reasons is that before you study the Quran, the first thing you need to know is that you don't know anything. That's it. Before you study the Quran, you should know that you know nothing. And after you study the Quran, you come to a conclusion that you know nothing. You just told us that you study the Quran and now you do not know what Alif Lam mean, mean. Brother, before you study the Quran, you should know that you know nothing. Okay, brother, what about after studying the Quran? Brother, still you know nothing. <laughs> The first ayah tells you what you're worth. Nothing. You know, la ilma lana illa ma we know nothing. Yeah. And if you don't have that attitude, you cannot understand the rest of it. That, that's it. If you don't have this attitude, you cannot understand the rest. You just told us we will learn nothing, understand nothing, and now you are saying to me, if I don't have the attitude of an ignorant idiot, I will not understand anything. But you just told me I will not understand anything anyway. The Quran. Forget it. But I understand this, did the Prophet وسلم, did he know how to read? No. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابِ وَمَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكَ النَّبِيَ الْأُمِّي You know, he doesn't know how to read. Now when someone does not know how to read, the word Alif doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. The word Lam doesn't, doesn't make, make any, any sense. sense. The word Meme doesn't, doesn't make, make any, any sense. sense. Uh, brother, the one who like the word does, what are you? Look how many does you have. The Muslim, they say does a lot. I think you should convert to Islam. Look how Did you see how many times he said the word does? Astonishing. Doesn't make any sense. What the word alif mean? Doesn't make any sense. What the letter alif mean? Doesn't make any sense. What the letter alif mean? Doesn't make any sense. I hope you will not continue saying the same about the rest of the Quran all day. Doesn't make any sense. We got it. And if you don't have that attitude, you cannot understand the rest of the Quran. Forget it. But I understand this. Did the Prophet وسلم, did he know how to read? No. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابِ وَمَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكَ uh -huh. al الْأُمِّي You know, he doesn't know how to read. Now when someone does not know how to read, the word Alif doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. The word Lam doesn't make, doesn't any, make any sense. sense. The word meme doesn't, doesn't make, make any, any sense. sense because these are letters of the alphabet and the only people who learn the alphabet are people who learn how to what? Read. So the first... Muhammad is 40 years old. He do not know what Alif mean. Alif is mean A, by the way. To those who don't speak Arabic. Alif Lam Meme is A-L-M. A-L-M. The Prophet, the brother, he was 40 years old. He did not know what A mean, and he never heard of it, because only the one who knows it is the one who knows how to write, how to read. <laughs> but you, Abdul, you idiot. Allah, he gave it to him by lips, not by writing. And this is the language he speak already, and his name is Muhammad. So Muhammad did not know what the letter A mean? It's a letter. Only one they know is brother is those who knows how to write, how to read. It's a miracle. It's a supernatural miracle, brother. Because the prophet, do not, this is how desperate they are trying to find the miracle for this guy. While, Muhammad, while Jesus was making a person who cannot see, see, Muhammad was able to say A. While Jesus was making the one who cannot walk, walk, Muhammad was saying L. While Jesus resurrecting people from the grave, Muhammad he was able to say M. I mean, look, brother. Look how amazing the Prophet is. He was able to say A L M. Who can do that? And yet he do not know how to write, how to read. I'm sure the guy who told me to say does, he is upset now because the prophet did not say A does, L does, M does. My friend, in the coming Quran, we will add does for you. Promise. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابِ وَمَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكَ النَّبِيَ الْأُمِّي You know, he doesn't know how to read. 
Now when someone does not know how to read, the word alif doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make sense. The word lam doesn't make any sense. The word meme doesn't make any sense because these are letters of the alphabet. And the only people who learn the alphabet are people who learn how to what? Read. Read. So the first thing that was given in the surah is reminding you that the messenger himself والسلام, has no clue how to read and yet out of his mouth comes the word alif, lam, meme, which is impossible for someone who doesn't read. It's impossible. It's impossible for someone who does not know how to read to say ALM. It is impossible. Look, all the, all the Muslims agree, brother. It's impossible. And you will not find one of those they are listening and saying to him, What the crap you are saying, man? A kid that is eight months old, he can say A. He does not know how to read. So it's impossible for someone to not know how to write, how to read, to say A. How many of you is going to take jahada? Hold on. I, I feel like I'm nervous now. I wanna I wanna take a moment of relaxation. Seriously, I feel like taking a moment of relaxation. The greatest Mujahid was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest teacher was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest father was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest husband was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest mercy to humanity was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest habit to ever worship Allah Azza wa Too much relaxation will kill you. Okay. Hold on, my heart like... Too much relaxation. What? Guys, do you like our commercial break? It's called do this and relax all day. Muhammad was able to say ALM. Who can do that? He was the greatest in everything. He is the only one who do not know how to write, how to rape. He was able to say A-L-M. That's amazing. I cannot do that. Be honest. Can you? He Hindus. Can you do that? You cannot. Let us ask that Guru. Can you say A-L-M Guru? The Guru says, what are you talking about? This is only privilege for Prophet Muhammad. We Hindu cannot do that. Let us ask the Christians, hey Christians, can you say ALM? The Christian will say, no, we cannot. Let us ask Netanyahu. Hey Netanyahu, can you say ALM? Khabibi. Khabibi, I cannot say A and L and M because simply it is only a prophet, he can say that. Okay, Netanyahu, you can go. Habibi, I want to tell you something about the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad is the most amazing Prophet. This is why the Jews, they like him. With Netanyahu, just we ask you one question and now it's time for you to go. Habibi, I want to tell you something. Ali, we have a credit card for Prophet Muhammad. And if you subscribe to the credit card, Habibi, you can get the blessing from Allah. Netanyahu, come on. I don't go to the credit card now. Just go. We ask you just about the Prophet. I mean, Netanyahu want to do business. Sorry, I have to hang up on you. Going back, see, as you see, Christian, Jews, Hindus, they cannot say ALM. Nobody can do that. Only Prophet Muhammad can do that. It's impossible. It's a point of history where the Prophet says ALM. If doesn't make any sense. The word lam doesn't make any sense. The word meme doesn't make any sense because these are letters of the alphabet. And the only people who learn the alphabet are people who learn how to what? Read. So the first thing that was given in the surah is reminding you that the messenger himself والسلام, has no clue how to read and yet out of his mouth comes the word alif, 
lam, mim, which is impossible for someone who doesn't read. That's like saying somebody doesn't know anything about English, they don't know any alphabet, they don't know any reading, but they say W. Can you do that? Can anyone who do not know English say W? I mean, here we have to stop. And we have to be honest. It is time for fact check. Who of you can say W? And you do not know English? Nobody. It's like saying, <laughs> someone do not know English and you say to him, say W. It's impossible. I remember when I was like ignorant, before I learned about Allah, the God of mercy, who chop heads and fingers, and you know, and I wasn't able to say W. I used, like, they give me a website, they say W, 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 Double me, double ha, double who, double they, double does. You know, I don't know how to say W correctly. But then, brother, the inspiration of Allah come. And when the inspiration of Allah come, the story is different story. We can prove to you with clear evidence that you cannot say words if you do not know the language. There's a great example about a holy prophet who was sent to America from France and he wanted to say hamburger. He could not do it, brother. He could not do it. I mean, we have to face the fact. He tried, but it doesn't work. Not everyone can do that. And this is the proof with the reference. I would like to buy a hamburger. You would like to to buy <coughs> a, um, See, he can't say he can't say no, no, no. let's break it down i i i i, 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 I would, 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 would 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 like like like, like to to toi, toi, to to to? To? Like to, to, to. Bye. Bye bye. B. Bye. B. B. Bye. Bye. B. 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 A. 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 Hamburger. A. Hamburger. A. Hamburger. A. Hamburger. Hamburger. A. Hamburger. See, we have evidence. This is this is this is history, my friend. This is this is all is there. I mean, you cannot deny it. We got your busted Christians. Nobody can do that. Only Prophet Muhammad. Look at this guy. They are, you know, you can say B, burger, hamburger. He cannot do that. If the Prophet was there, he will say it fluently. I would like to buy a hamburger. Even the Prophet, he did not know English. And as you see, he made a miracle. But there is something more important here about this. P. R. Oh. The word R, W, P, Q, X. These words don't mean anything. These letters don't mean anything on their own. Right. They only mean something when you go to school hmm. and you learn the alphabet. If you say Muhammad, if you say to Muhammad, hey, Muhammad, Aisha, Muhammad, he says, what Aisha mean? I don't know how to read, how to write. Hey, Muhammad, uh, moon. If they say, I don't know what moon mean. What are you talking about? I don't know how to write, how to read. Hey, Muhammad, food. Uh, I don't know what food means. What are you talking about? Hey, Muhammad penis. He would say, I know that one. <laughs> Muhammad knowledge is limited, brother, because he don't know how to write, how to read. Yet he was able to say A-L-M. Now, why is that important? 
It's important because when the message began and the messenger was told, read, isn't that the same? Isn't that as impossible as the messenger knowing Alif and Lam and Meem? <laughs> isn't that the same problem? Yeah, problem, yeah. The surah actually begins with almost a reminder of the fact that the messenger cannot read, he is made to read. Sallallahu Look, what the heck? So Allah said to Muhammad, read, but Muhammad cannot read. Okay, after Allah said to Muhammad, read, still he cannot read. So if I say to somebody, read, is reminding you that you do not know how to read? Like what? This is showing me that Allah do not know what he is talking about because he is saying to the man, you see, Jesus said to the blind man, see, he saw. Allah said to the man who cannot read, read. Did he read? No. Additional proof that Allah and the story is a fabrication because if Allah said to Muhammad, read, after he said to him, read, still Muhammad cannot read. So, <clears throat> my stomach is talking, sorry. According to the story here, Muhammad is too much stupid for Allah to make him read. This is how stupid he is, to the point he could not even make it be happen. He said to him, read, still he cannot read. The Muslim make it a miracle. Then it says, وَلَمْ يَقُلْ ذَلِكَ الْقُرْآنِ He didn't say this, that Quran. He said, ذَلِكَ kitab. What does kitab mean? Something written. And something written can only benefit someone who can what? Read. There is something written, but Muhammad didn't have something written. <laughs> are you point are you working for a Christian Prince? Be honest with me. Did a Christian Prince pay you because Muslim they say that every Muslim who left Islam is paid by a Christian Prince or even he is not even Muslim a Muslim? A Muslim? Huh? He's paid. So Allah said to Muhammad, a book and it's which means it's written, and yet there's no book and nothing written given to Muhammad. Genius. Hmm. Now, I mean, the topic is going all, we don't want to, we don't, don't want to be like the Quran, the Quran is all over the place, as you see, and it's a joke. They are so desperate to make their prophet, they worship this man, and by worshiping him, they made us laugh at him. And you will notice that Muhammad, he have no idea, he is not a person who believe in God. This is why the video here is explaining the last chapter, the last, the last two verses of the chapter of the cow, to prove that Muhammad, he have no idea. Muhammad is not even a believer. Muhammad is a pagan. Do we have any Muslim would like to give us a call? Maybe you can correct us. Anyone? Any Muslim would like to give me a call? Okay, I don't know. We have to take a med meditation now time. I will let you meditate and uh, relax. Relax in time, commercial break. <laughs> the greatest habit to ever worship Allah Azza wa Jal was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest messenger to ever walk the earth was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest prophet to ever receive revelation was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest creation that Allah ever created. Thank God he don't have a knife in his hand. This is, was a meditation class about Prophet of Allah in Islamic school. This is how you relax in a Muslim school. And we Muslim don't believe Muhammad is God. But the brother, the greatest reward. What the, what, what is that? What's happening? What's happening? Are you okay? I'm afraid that one of your nerves is going to explode, my friend. He's the greatest. 
Okay, why you are so so go going crazy? He's the greatest, the greatest in what to his the husband? Is that the guy the Quran says that the wives they have to party against him? And Allah and the angel will stand with him? How come he is the greatest husband? Even the Quran talk about it. He could not even control his house. Anyway. I like it. I like, you know, to be... I know. I mean, sometimes we exaggerate too much. The prophet was really wonderful. He sounds like a pink panther sometimes. Hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. It's not Damburger. It's not hamburger. I'm not saying Damburger. I said I would like to buy a Damburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy the hamburger. Hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. Maybe we should stop. We don't quit. We don't quit. We do not quit. This is the Prophet Muhammad. We don't quit. We don't quit, brother. He is the greatest non quit to the point he tried to commit his suicide many times in the top of the mountain. Oh boy. If you did not subscribe to our channel yet, you better subscribe. And if you subscribe already, you better subscribe and subscribe. Sorry, subscribe and subscribe. You know. How I was able to say the word subscribe with my funny English, it might be a miracle. Sub, 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 and scribe. What, uh, what is that? I mean, this is English, it's funny, you know, like, I mean, sometimes, well, like, once a guy, he says to me, uh, uh, my nose is running. I was speaking to him over the phone. I said, what, where? He said, my nose is running. I was like, like there's a moment of a truth, like what? And I started suspecting his brain, you know, like his brain is not functioning right. Like, and I was saying to myself as an Arab, <laughs> this American guy said to me, <laughs> his nose is running unbelievable. <laughs> Crazy people. <laughs> Only in America, their nose is running, brother. Yeah, uh, you know, because I'm, we Arab, we don't have running nose, you know, brother. You know. Our nose will grow from lying only. Our nose doesn't run. The fastest growing nose ever. What the name of the guy, the nose guy? Uh, I don't know how to say his name. Penequino, Ponequino. Pon, po. I know. <laughs> okay. Now, do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Did I did I tell you the story about a guy from the church? Once, you know, like a, a nice person after the church. I was new in America. I do not really know much about the country. So when he take me downtown to show you the city, and he said to me, aren't you hungry? I said, yeah, it was like almost noon time, uh, afternoon. And he said, like, do you like to eat? I said, sure. And then he said to me, after I said, yeah, I'm hungry. He said, let us eat hot dogs. And my head starts spinning. This American guy is going to feed me dogs. Like, what? And then he stopped in the front of the place. He said, let us eat hot dogs. And I look at them. I said, you know what? I'm, it's okay. I'm not really hungry now. He said, no, no. You said, you said, don't worry. I mean, come on. It's not expensive. And I say, no, no, no. You see, I will eat later. And I'm really hungry. But I'm not going to eat dogs. I mean, come on. This is a crazy American. They want to feed me hot dogs. And, you know, the guy from the church, you know, they're, they're the dogs. I'm not going to eat dogs. Like, puppy, they are beautiful. You know, yeah. The... <laughs> oh boy. And Muhammad, by the way, says dogs are dirty. And then suddenly we find that Allah Himself, He have a dog. And if you don't believe in Him, the Lord of the Star, 
Allah will send his dog to eat you. Give a link for sort yeah for you can search for it. You know you can search for it, my friend. Anyway, do we have any Muslim here? Any Muslim? I find actually there's too much similarity between uh, between Muhammad and this cartoon and I'm very serious about that in the cartoon this person the one who is known as a girl pink pink panic I don't know how to say his name I'm sorry don't laugh at me. <laughs> I like it when they have interview with him and they ask him a question. You know? uh, excuse me, uh, Pinocchio, but is it indeed true that when you uh, tell a lie, your nose does get longer? Ah, yeah, yeah. You want to see me lie and have uh, my nose get longer? Yeah. Yes, would you please? Sure, they come from all around for that. <laughs> okay, stand by, folks, because in just one second now, Pinocchio is going to tell a lie and his nose is going to get longer. Get this, folks. My name is Abraham Lincoln and I'm 500 feet tall. How about that? Did you see that, folks? The no Did you see that, folks? Well, is it, this is exactly what Muhammad said, that Adam was created and he was 60 meter tall. Some story says uh, 60 arms. This guy, his nose grow because he said what? He is someone and he was 500 years, 500 meter tall. My name is Abraham Lincoln and I'm 500 feet tall. My name is Muhammad and Adam was 60 meter tall. Zzz. A lot of similarity. And what make it more funny that Adam is so tall and the Kaaba is so small. So the Kaaba, I mean, okay, Adam is now, because Muslims they say the first one who did Hajj is Adam. So now Adam is more than six floor building high. Way more than six floor. What's six floor actually? I mean, these days like the, the uh, uh, every floor is like two, or less even than two meters, some of them. This is 30 floor building. So Adam is 30 floor building and the Kaaba is 6 meter high. So the Kaaba is not even in the size of a step in the front of the house of Adam. So Adam was going around the Kaaba and it was a small rock. That is a miracle. Where did Muhammad he get this from? And by the way, here Muhammad he copied something from the Old Testament. If you notice, for sure, not the sixty meter. He said that Allah he created Adam in His image. Do you see this part? Muhammad, he stole that from the Old Testament. God created Adam in his image, and that is the image of Christ. Exactly, word by word. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. I'm not going to keep this video for long, as you know. So I will keep it there. 
maximum four hours and all the videos before it is going to be taken down too so i will give you guys four hours to download the video subscribe to those who download my videos so you can watch them you know uh, maybe we sound like we are doing some entertainment maybe you are laughing um, uh, maybe 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 whatever you want but this is nothing but arming you with information to show you how silly how stupid this cult is the Mohammedan they try to decorate the grave which is called Islam they would marble in the top of it but my friend the grave at the end of the day is a grave they cover the grave of Islam by marble expensive they got the oil they got the money they control YouTube they control Facebook you can post anything and you you know that's why I cannot even keep my videos money talk you see the vice president of USA the previous one princess going to Emirat why money money everybody pra praising the prince of this a prince of that the king and they have no human right they have no suddenly they are the best in the world that's it money they forget about the human right there it's money let's give them money this earth is sick and those who lead you they are sick people Joe Biden is upset from China human right but he's not upset from Saudi Arabia human right or Emirati human right or Bahrain human right or the King of Jordan human right he called the king, hey, king of Jordan, we stand with you. But the guy, he just arrested 50, 60 people just for opening their mouth in Facebook. Can you believe it? If you are their puppy, they glorify you. If you are not, and you have the money and you don't pay them, they will torture you. So be aware of those liars. We have too many of them. And those are the ones who put them in the front of Google. And those are the ones who you find their videos. And those are the ones who promote them. Not us. Because we say the truth. And the truth is very costly. Me, myself, I might pay my life for it. But is it worth it? Absolutely. I will be happy to give my life for the truth. For the Lord, he says, I am the truth. I am the way. I am he. So be truthful. And don't be driven by who those controlling the media these days. The liars. Anyone says to you, Islam is peace, you know that he's lying. You know that every airport, you have to wait for hours because of Islam and Islam only. Not because of the Jews, not because of the Hindus, not because of the atheists, not because of the Christians, not because of any, of any religion, but Islam. That is the truth. When they say that those who speak against Islam, they have a phobia. Do you have a phobia in the airport from Muslims? You do, right? So my friend, stand firm, learn, educate yourself, don't be a fool. If you are a fool, this is your fault. I gave you my time, I gave you what I learned, I spent my life studying this garbage. I hate it actually. But somebody have to clean the garbage. Imagine if those who collect your garbage every day, they have a strike in the city. Your city will turn into disaster. It's a job nobody likes to do. It is a job people feel disgusted from it. But somebody have to do it. And I am not an exception. I hate to do it. But I have to do it. So, in the same time, we will not hate the Muslims because if we fail into hate 
we fail into Islam. The second you hate you are following Muhammad. Even though maybe you are fighting Muhammad, because Muhammad, he nothing but a devil who wants you to hate the Muslims, so the Muslims will hate you more, and we hate each other, and we kill each other. This is what the devil want. And even the Quran witness for that. The Quran says that shaitan will spread hatred and enmity between you. But here Muhammad, he meant the Muslims. Shaitan will spread hatred between them. In chapter 5, verse number 91. But in the same chapter, Muhammad, he confirmed that his God, he spread hatred between the Jews and between the Christians and between everybody who is not a Muslim. So let us make it clear. Shaitan in the Quran spread hate. Allah in the Quran spread hate. The target is different. According to the Quran, the one who spread hatred between Muslims is Shaitan, but the one who spread hatred between Christians are Allah. This is the chapter 5, verse number 64. And Allah will increase hatred between them. Allah will support hatred between them. We have put enmity and hatred among them until the day of resurrection. Allah, speaking about the Jews, the same Allah he speak about the Christians. He will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians until the day of resurrection. So a Christian person who fell into the hate, he is following the plan of Allah, the devil Muhammad to hate each other, to kill each other. In the same time, I'm not saying to you, you know, when I say love Muslim, doesn't mean if somebody a terrorist, you give him a hug. No, a terrorist, we will deal with him differently. We are loving, forgiving people. And because we love the Muslim as the Lord, he order us, we show them the truth. We will not hate them, and we will not fail into the hate trap of the devil, Allah. Whoever believe in hate, he believe in Allah, even if your religion have different name. Whoever believe in hatred, he is following Allah, even if you have different name for your belief. Islam is based on hate, Christianity is based on love. If the world practice one sentence of Christ's teaching, love your enemy, imagine how this earth will change. Every country, even the poorest one, spend most of their budget in war. Why? Because the world don't want to practice one sentence of Christ. If we practice one sentence, love your enemy, this earth is heaven. Because then there's no enemy. And there's no thieves, and there's no criminals, and there's no rapists. Everybody is loving. There's no harm. There's no worry. One sentence of Christ, not a book, will change the whole world. A sentence nobody dared to say it before. A sentence nobody dared to say it after. For it is extreme love. And that is Christ. So I leave you with peace. And... I'm happy to have you, all of you here. Uh, Muhammad Saeed want to call? No, no, Saeed didn't dare to call, he's an idiot. He's just a kid. I had my pal talk open for the last two hours. None of them call me. Anyway, I leave you in peace. And again, guys, I'm going to keep the video just for a few hours. After that, I will take it down. So don't hesitate to download it as soon as it is ready. And subscribe to those who download my videos. And those who download my videos, don't go and flag somebody for downloading the video from you. You have no right to do so. Be a servant for Christ. Don't be a person who worship himself. If you are here to serve, you give your time, you give your work, and the Lord will reward you.
The same as the Lord, he says, when you pray, go to your closet. Don't be the same as the hypocrite who follow Muhammad, going in the top of the car to pray. So when you do a work, you do not need to make a noise about it. Hey, you took my video. First, it's not your video. Secondly, if you believe it is your video, this mean, that's mean you are no Christian. For saving soul is more important than your video. Learn how to be Christian, otherwise you are a false one. I am the one who made this video, and I say it's not my video, it's for you. Because if I'm making the video for me, what's the point? I'm making it for you. I do not need to repeat myself about this garbage every day. This is nothing but garbage. But sadly, we were infected with it. And somebody had to clean it. So either you are going to help us in the cleaning process, or you are a person worshipping himself, you are, you are the same as Muhammad. And by posting the video in different channel, you never know, you might change the life of somebody without knowing, the Lord he knew. Maybe you do not know about it, but the Lord he knew. You will receive the blessing for saving the soul of somebody by posting the video there. Somebody clicking it, he thought, you know, I remember once, uh, uh, someone, she is like, I think a teenage, 16, 17, uh, but she did not say that to me right away. She came to the chat room, she said, a few years ago, I was going to convert to Islam. But then I saw your video. At that time, she was a teenage. And she was saying to me, you changed my life. I don't know her. And if she, never, if she never mentioned that in a chat room, I would never know about her. I remember once a woman, she was going to marry a Muslim. Imagine, in the same day her wedding is going to be. She sent me a long message in Paltok. Long letter about what happened. She's waiting for the limousine. She was bored and somehow she she don't know what to do. She's waiting for them to come and pick her up. She's ready. She went to a chat and the reason she entered my room, it was about Muslim husband, something like the room is called Muslim husband, wife beating, something like that. You know, I don't remember the name exactly. And this is what get her attention because she is going to marry a Muslim. She entered and she found me debating a Muslim and he was defending why the man had the right to beat his wife in Islam. And she decided to cancel her wedding and to be to wait more time. So when the guy called her, he said, where are you? The limousines came to you. You know, he said, you are not leaving. What would happen? And she said, I need more time. I don't, I don't think I'm ready. And then the guy, he started threatening her. Do you know how much money I spend? It's she is telling me all oh, this is in the, in the, in the, in the message she sent in Pato. And then she said, the second I told him I need more time, he showed me a different face I never saw before. He started threatening me, chasing me, you know. So like, she saw a different image of a person. He was so kind at the beginning. It's a chat room. I don't know who's listening. I don't know who's not listening. Here we go, the woman she was, her life changed. He want to beat her, I will show you who you are, you don't know what you are talking to, you don't know you are dealing with who. Suddenly the guy became a gang guy. And it was her lucky day that we were debating about beating women. And the guy, the sheikh was debating me, he was saying, what's wrong with that? Don't you agree that women, they don't understand any language sometime unless you beat them? So she was lucky that she entered the chat when the guy was agreeing, like because Muslims sometimes they play games, they say, no, we don't do that. You know, you know the game, right? The taqiyya. No, this is not true. The prophet, he says, deal with your wife, uh, you know, nicely. So when she came, the guy was saying the truth. 
that yes, the Quran says so, what the problem? This is why when you do some work, speaking to people around the world, you don't know you are talking to who. I receive messages, make me so glad from Africa, from, middle, from countries in Africa I never even heard of. Those people, they are thirsty for the truth. If you go and watch my videos, the one with subtitle to Indonesian, you will not believe the number. Do you know why? Because those Indonesian are thirsty for the truth. The Christian priest, they don't talk about Islam. And I understand why, because they live in a country where you will be killed if you talk about it. The Muslims, Sheikh, they attack Islam because this is their country, allow them to attack, it's attack Christianity, sorry. So it's one-sided religion where the other part cannot respond and nobody dare to respond. So people are thirsty to hear what we say. And that's why if we go and search for my videos in the uh, uh, Indonesian language, you will be amazed about the number. Like this video now, I have 1,300 watching. It was 400 before we say we are going. <laughs> and then the same video will be posted in Indonesian channel. It's going to, to have 100,000. There is a reason for that. Uh, Matza, I am not here to talk about the Pope. Don't go there. The Pope, he is a political leader and he is not presenting Christianity. Mistakenly, people, they think that the Pope, he present even the, the Catholic. He is a, he's a, he's a king, he is a leader, he is a, a head of a state. So if there is one of them was a hypocrite, that's his business. But how come you don't quote that the Pope of the Catholic, one of them he says, Muhammad, he brought nothing but evil. So why you remember only one Pope? Hmm? And just to let you know, if not the Catholic, all of you who those are Christian in the West will be Muslims and slave of Allah by now. It was the Catholic who saved you. I'm not a Catholic, by the way. But I don't like stupidity. I don't like arrogant. I don't like false information. We stand against it, we find it. If not the Catholic, the Muslim today will be controlling all of the West. It was the Catholic who stopped them. So be a little bit honest. The Catholic is not the Pope. And the Catholic are Christians like us. And maybe better than me. The Lord, he says, from their fruits you shall know them. So each individual, he will be judged, not a church name. So if this Pope was bad, he's bad, he'd go to hell. So what if he's a Pope? People elected, you know, cardinals. But if he's good, he's good. Same as me and you. From their fruits. So every one of us will be judged by his fruit, regardless of what the church he go to. Whoever believe in me, and I will live, Jesus said. I'm not the one who decides who will go to heaven, or who will go to hell. It is the Messiah who made it clear. Whoever believe in me, believe in me as what? As a son of God. Believe in me as God in flesh. Believe in me as in the cross. Believe in me as resurrection, believe in me as coming back, believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and this is all those churches they believe in, so they are Christians. Anything else is you are following chapter 5, verse 14 in the Quran. You see it? When you see a Christian, someone claimed to be a Christian, dividing the Christians, he is following Allah. And the verse in the front of you in the screen.
doesn't matter what the church name when you see a priest attacking other church saying they are not believers they will go to hell he is not serving the Lord Messiah he is serving Allah that is the plan of Allah in front of you clear the map in front of you so for me this is why you know like actually there's many people they don't like me by the way I have some even there are ministers and churches they stop talking to me because I say to them this is you are wrong stop talking wrong about the Catholic or I say to a Catholic stop talking wrong about the Protestant because you are serving the devil Allah I am NOT against correcting somebody absolutely not so if a Catholic is wrong in something but don't say he is not a Christian shame on you that's not true and if everyone he did something wrong in his life he is no Christian with me and you we are not Christians to them you see the hypocrisy if everyone who do something wrong he is no Christian then none of us is a Christian but the Bible is so clear Christ he came to us he came to the sick not to the healthy because this earth is sick Jesus came not because this earth is healthy he came for the sick and you are saying to someone you are sick you go to hell stupid this is stupid when Jesus says I came to them what's wrong with you so whoever loved the Messiah and believe in the Messiah he loved his brother and sister in Christ it doesn't matter what the church they belong to as long they are believing in the Father the Son the Holy Spirit three person one God they believe in the crucifixion they believe in the resurrection they believe that the Messiah is the Word of God and they have the same exact four Gospels as we know and the Bible says anyone who bring other than the scriptures let him be cursed anything else doesn't count for me this is why I say to all I love you all you're a Catholic you're a Protestant you are Orthodox those names really doesn't make it too much different for me I know you from your fruits not from your names right somebody saying Hinduism is the best okay this is for you my friend for me I believe in Christ I don't believe in Hinduism and actually even your uh, sad guru he says that Hinduism is not even a religion so how, I don't know what you are talking about it's not a religion they don't even have a book it's a philosophy and philosophy is uh, very flexible you know I can give you philosophy from now until tomorrow let me give you one I used to be a tree with feeling and one day I got upset and my leaves fell down and then the owner of the house he looked at me and he said this tree is not being happy and he decided to give me some food and I ate it and then my leaves flourish and I became so green and I gave her flowers are you happy now it's just, I'm just feeding you words it's philosophy I can give you the, from this enter tomorrow there's something called reality and there's something called fantasy and there's something useful and there's something unuseful so there's many they spend their life teaching you something unuseful playing with your mind it's like a sugar in the mind you know let's give him some candies for the mind this is called mind sugar candies according to me but it's not real it's a fantasy it's a fiction in reality even those who speak about doing good they do bad they worship money they teach you how to give yourself sacrifice yourself the second you say to them give me a take a dollar from them and see what will happen right Uh, anyone will speak against the Catholic we will block you because we know that the devil he tried to divide us and anyone who says that the Catholic they have a statues this is idol worship that's stupid of you because the Catholic agree that those are just statues and I don't agree with it but that does not make them idol worshiper because they don't worship the idols 
And just to show you the hypocrisy, you have many idols in your life, and you are not a Catholic. You go crazy for a person. You see an actor, you go crazy, you do pee-pee. You die to the football. It's just in the form of idolism. People kill each other for a football. They kill each other for gambling. They kill each other for a dollar. Women, they are taken off their panties for a dollar. This is all is idolism. And you claim to be the good person, supposedly. I came the good way, right? You cannot fight drugs. You cannot fight drinking. You cannot fight smoking. And you think you don't have idols in your life. You do. You yourself, you live as an idol. People are hypocrite. So, as the Bible says, before you see the little thing in the eyes of your of your brother, see the big tree in your eye. And this is the only way to be in the right path. Be good. If there is somebody bad, let us see how good you are. Okay, you don't have idols, good for you. What about or what about the rest? Do you really? Right? Uh, Muhammad Said that Allah he says Allah will spread hatred because they did not keep the covenant. This is another stupid mistake in the Quran because when Allah he gave us a covenant, why are we from are we children of Abraham? <laughs> are we Jews? <laughs> Are we children of Israel? So, Saeed, you see, I don't like to use the word, like, I mean, the Muslims they say to me sometimes, why you say the word idiot? Or why you say the word stupid? Uh, you tell me what I, okay, now what are we, oh, they will say to you, in front of everybody, Saeed, can you show me the covenant which Allah, he gave us? Go ahead. Hey, people, do you think Muhammad Saeed can tell us what is the covenant the Christians, they receive from the God of Islam, Allah? What is that? Where we can find it? I want to go back to the covenant. Go ahead. What was the occasion? Worship only one God? We worship only one God. Trinity is one God. And your God is stupid. Secondly, if God is one or ten, who care? The question is, is he God or not? If the Hindu, they have 30 million God, but those gods are true. So is the Hindu are wrong? Secondly, you Muslims don't believe in monotheism. You believe in Tawheed. And the video we played yesterday is a clear proof of that. The Sheikh, he said clearly that the pagan, Mushrikeen, they believe in the same thing the Muslims believe today. They believe in Allah. But they take a helper with Allah. What is that? He said the stones. You Muslims, you take the stone, black stone, as a helper. And you, your prophet, he says, the one who touched the stone or kiss it, Allah erases sin. You Muslims are pagans. And this is what you notice about those kind of religion, where they say things and they practice the opposite. Right? Someone saying to me, I am a Christian, but I want to tell you, uh, you blocked me. I blocked you because you are dividing the Christians. You are not being Christian. Anyone who divides the Christian, he is no Christian. You can say that having status is wrong, but don't mention a name. Explain to the person. You can say having a picture in a church is wrong. Okay, say your idea. But don't say you are not a Christian. That's, that's false. And that is a stupid of you. So, if somebody do wrong, that does not make him a Christian. Well, none of us is a Christian then, because all of us, we do wrong. All of us, we do wrong. If there's anyone here is holy. So, at least if a Catholic person, let us say, he have a picture in front of him, and he kiss it, let us say, a picture. But he knew it's a picture anyway. He respect the person who present that picture for him. Okay, he loved that person. So even that is just because he loved Jesus too much, not the opposite. But look at you. You worship the dollar, you kiss it every day. 
You worship your life, you worship your car, you worship, you worship what you worship. So even the bad they do is better than the good you did. Don't be a hypocrite. And again, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with any status, unless it's like for art, no problem. But somebody praying in front of a status, that is not right. And this is far away from what Jesus said. And the Bible says, don't make images for what is up in heaven or down on earth. So yes, people do wrong. They do wrong. But even the wrong they did in that part is because they love Jesus very much, not because they are bad. Right? Uh, uh, Muhammad Saeed, I'm waiting for you. Where is the covenant? Did you find the covenant? Secondly, if somebody don't have a covenant, a covenant, and he is lost, so you make him lost more. Here you see the opposite of teaching of Christ. While Jesus says, "I came for the sick, not for the healthy," Muhammad is saying, "I will make you sick and more sick." And that is a clear message that Allah is the devil. Because if I am lost, my covenant with God, well then God supposedly he sent his messengers to guide me, not to do the opposite. Correct, guys? Why Allah he sent Muhammad, the Muslim, they say, for guidance. But you just said he, he, he will spread hatred and enmity between them. Even the Quran made it more clear that Allah will block their ear, their, their eyes, their sight, their heart. So they will not understand and they will not see. So why you send Muhammad? The Quran says too, that are you going to guide those who Allah do make them misguide or deceive them? So the Quran make it clear that Allah will not make someone who he misguided to be guided. Uh, Kahish, I don't like stupid talk. Do you have a picture of Jesus? Uh, no, I don't. Secondly, if somebody have a picture of Jesus or not, and somebody make an art about Jesus and he draw it, does that make that picture Jesus? No. But does that make that person not a Christian? No. So stop being stupid. And for them, they say, yes, we have a picture of Jesus. We have like the tower where his blood was in his face and the tower make an image. But you believe in it or not? That will not change the fact that they believe in Jesus as a son of God. They believe in him as God in the flesh. They believe in him. They believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So look what you do. You go against the picture only and suddenly they are no Christian for you. You are a stupid fool. You are a certified donkey. So your fornication is okay, but their picture is bad. Your drinking is okay, but their picture is bad. All the wrong you do all your life, praying for God to forgive you is okay, but their picture is wrong. That's it, they will go to hell. For you are a hypocrite, you are a scam. You don't want to see your garbage, but you want to call them garbage. So even if somebody do wrong, my friend, and he is from different church, some people, they go to the church, they are wearing short. How in the world you wear a short? This is the house of God. Or women wearing short a skirt. So the picture of Mary is wrong, but women going to the church wearing short a skirt is okay. Since when? Hypocrite people. Son of God is equal to God? Yeah, Son of God is... Isn't it you who says that the Son is the same as his Father? If I ask you, Aisha, who is the Father of Jesus? I will be waiting for your answer, especially you are Asia and you are five, six years old.
Even your stupid Quran says that Jesus is holy. Okay, he is born from where? From God. Isn't it the Quran says that Jesus is the word of Allah sent down to Mary? So what was Jesus before he became a human? He was the word of God. Is the word of God created according to Islam? No. So Jesus never was a created. He was exist before time exists according to your stupid Quran. And he was not a created for he is the word of God. Those Muslims, when they opposed Jesus, they did not even know what the religion is saying. The Quran made it so clear because the Quran is written by an idiot. His name is Muhammad. That Jesus is God. How? First of all, he had no father. Look how the Quran answer about this. Just to show you how stupid Muhammad is. Chapter 3, verse number 59 says, Verily the likeness of Isa, aka Jesus, before Allah is the likeness of Adam. He created him from dust, and he said to him, Be, and he was. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid conversation like this? Hey, Muslims, Allah said to Adam, Be, and he was. If we go and read the process of creating Adam, we will see the opposite. We will see Allah, he made a mix of dust and water. Then Allah, he fashioned someone in the shape of a human. And then Allah, he breathed into him. And then Adam became alive. He did not say be. This is number one mistake, which is a huge. Number two, Jesus, Allah did not say to him be, and he was too. Allah, he sent down the word. And then he breathed into the private part of Mary. And then Mary, she have a son. So this is a total contradiction for the whole story of both coming to existence. Adam and the Messiah. And we can show you the reference in front of your eyes. Look at this. Here we go. <laughs> this is religion this is religion who is a Muslim is willing to read for me the stupidity Allah said to the angels, I'm going to create a human being from mud. Okay. So when I have fashioned him, okay, and breathed into him, okay, they bow down to him. Where is Allah? He said to him, be and he was. Here we have a three process. Allah, he made a mud. And making mud mean mixing dust, dirt, with water even your Quran says clay and then he did what? he fashioned him the second stage and number three is a breathing so the process of a breathing of, of creating it have to be three is that a symbolic for the trinity? why three? And then how the Quran says, Allah, he said to Adam, be, and he was. One of them have to be wrong. Are you there, Aisha? Do you see it, guys? One of them have to be wrong. The Quran says in different verse that the similarity of Isa, the same as Adam, Allah, he said to him, be, and he was. But as you see, he did not say be. It was a process of making a statues and then he breathed into it. And by the way, Muslims, do Allah breathe? 
Who want to answer this question? This question will make you go to the bathroom for the coming 10 years. Any Muslim can answer us? Do Allah breathe? Any Muslim? Do Allah breathe? Look at them. They are in trouble for just a simple question. This is why they don't dare to debate me. This is a stupid cult. This is very this is Islam is the easiest one to defeat. This is the most silly, stupid cult. Muslims who want to answer me, do Allah breathe? Any Muslim have an idea how Allah He breathe? In order to have the ability to breathe, you need to have a spirit and soul. Well, I'm just trying to find out how the Muslim understand this. I mean, this is stupid. They say to you, Allah is not a man. They say to you, Allah is not, they have, he don't have a spirit. They say to you, he don't have attribute of a human. Because the spirit is attribute. And then it says, Allah, he breathed from his spirit. You see the translation here is wrong or false. It says he breathed into him soul. The fact in Arabic doesn't say that. It says he breathed into him from my soul. Min ruhi. It's in the front of you. Yeah, Aisha, uh, Allah, he created B by B. Okay, wait, 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 so who is the one who was created by B? This is the question. How Allah created him by saying B? <laughs> Where? If Jesus is the word of God, and the word of God is not created, according to you Muslims, <laughs> she is being smart supposedly I don't know if it's a male or a female I don't know because sometimes Muslims they call themselves with funny names you see it hold on let me clean the screen if the word of God is not a created so if Jesus was the word that's mean he never was a created he exists always he's divine same time Jesus was exist by saying B or he was not exist yet the Quran said no he wasn't exist yet he was exist as a word but not exist as Isa so how Allah complete the person his name is Isa he made a mud according to you okay the Quran says he's the same as Adam created from dust is that true what happened to Isa Allah he breathed into Mary dust and mud is that what he did? This is why we say clearly Islam cannot stand any question. It's a stupid cult. Very stupid, very silly. And none of them can really answer anything about it. Same time, why Jesus have no father? This is a total contradiction for the verse in the Quran where it says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُ نَسَبًا وَصِحْرًا and we need every human being after Adam from lineage. Every human being. Okay, who is the lineage of Jesus? Who is the father of Jesus? Read the interpretation for this verse where it says it clearly that after Adam, every human being is made from sexual relationship either by lawful marriage or unlawful and then even it says if you have unlawful relationship with the women you can have sex with the women and her daughter and I can show you the reference so if every person after Adam came from lineage of sexual relationship who is Jesus no answer that is just a stupid verse. 
How can you prove that the Bible is not corrupted? That's a good question, Aisha. First of all, I do not need to prove it because according to the Quran, the Bible is sent by Allah. So if the Bible is corrupt, that's mean Allah is a corrupt himself because the one who can corrupt the word of God, he can corrupt God. However, your stupid God, he says, that he agree with the Christian book. Your stupid God said, I agree with the book you have with you. Chapter 2, verse number 41. So you, because you are silly, ignorant, stupid, like your prophet, copy-paste. You go around, you say the Bible is corrupt. When the Quran says, I agree, confirming the book which is with you. So what a donkey do? The Bible is corrupt, brother. The Bible is corrupt, brother. The Quran says no. I confirm what is with you. And this is 600 years after Jesus. And now you are trying to change the topic. See, suddenly Aisha, you don't want to talk about the topic about Jesus. They change the topic. They are like, like a monkey. You jump from place to place. Because the first topic is embarrassing. So let's go to the second topic. Here we go. It's embarrassing. And now she will change the topic. So the third uh, question. Monkey is religion. The monkey, the monkey Muhammad, he jumped from place to place. They asked Muhammad a question. Like, they asked Muhammad about the spirit. What Muhammad is saying? Look at this idiot. Hey, Muhammad, what the spirit? What is the spirit? Somebody asking you what the spirit. Muhammad, he go home. He stay home for a month. And then Muhammad, he asked him again. Muhammad, what happened? What is the spirit? After all the thinking and talking to Jibreel and Allah, Allah gave him the answer. Allah knows best. If we ask that guru, who is a Hindu, he can tell you what spirit is, based on his philosophy or logic. Muhammad do not know. Look, they ask you, Muhammad, concerning the ruh, the spirit. Say the ruh is from the command, the knowledge from Allah. Like with the stupid, you're asking you. And Allah is now talking. Can't Allah tell us what it is? <laughs> stupid Aisha. It doesn't matter if it says Injil or not. It says confirming what is with you. So whatever with them, he confirming. You are stupid like your private again. The verse says, confirming what is with you. So your God blindly saying to them, whatever with you, I confirm. And that's mean, by the way, that your God too, he confirm the Talmud. Because he's saying to them, whatever with you, I confirm to you. Stupid is amazing. Do you see it? Is that an answer of God? Allah knows? Allah have the knowledge about the ruh. This is an answer from God. What is this? Obviously, he do not know. The same one they asked Muhammad. Muhammad, you want to tell a story about the seven sleepers? And people, they say to him, Muhammad, how many? Uh... How many there are? <clears throat> Read this and laugh with me. Have you ever heard of a stupidity like this? This is what happens when you do not know and people ask you a question and you try to make it lousy answer. Like a Muslim when he called me, he try his best not to answer. So he, get, he don't give an answer. So in chapter 18, verse number 22, some, they say they were a three and their dog is number four. And by the way, some they say they are five and their dog is number six. Guessing that and seeing. 
Yet some they say they were seven and their dog is number eight. Say Muhammad, only Allah knows their number. <laughs> So what this drama is about? I mean, why he cannot tell us the number? Okay, we got it. Some they say they are three and their dog is number four. Is they wrong? Some they say they are four and their dog is number five. Okay, are they wrong? Some they say they are five and their dog is number six. Well, are they wrong? Some they say they are seven and their dog is number eight. Are they wrong? Say Allah no they number. Like what the heck? This is God talking. So if we call now Dr. Fuchi, the idiot. Hey Fuchi, how many people they have corona? Some they say they are one million. Okay. Some they say they are two million. Hmm. And some they say they are 5 million. Okay. And some they say they are 6 million. Uh -huh. And some they say they are 8 million. Okay. What's the what answer? I say to you, Allah knows best that number. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Fuchi. Idiot. This is God talking. This is a guy who does not know what to say. He is afraid to say the number so they will get him busted. You know what Joe Biden who keeps saying you know the thing is better than this hey Joe Biden do you know the number uh, you know the thing you tell me what the difference between you know the thing and this and yet you call this a holy book of God I better stop here an hour ago I said I'm leaving I hate you all <laughs> yeah, well, yeah thank you very much for all of you and uh, Muslims you know uh, forgive me if I am really sometimes I scream and etc because you make me I feel sorry for you I mean your ignorance is amazing but we're trying to help you we love you we love you but Allah don't because if Allah do love you he will not make you so confused he will give you clear answers and he will give you a good prophet, not a scumbag, not a thief, not a liar, not a child molester. The Lord said from their fruits, you shall know them. And the fruit of Muhammad is all over the place. Thank you all. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget to download the video. I will take it down in a few hours from now. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And God bless you. Take care.